Introduction. Hurwitz theory is a beautiful algebra, algebra geometric theory that studies maps of Riemann surfaces. Despite being relatively unsophisticated, it is typically unapproachable at the undergraduate level because it ties together several branches of mathematics that are commonly treated separately. This book intends to present Hurwitz theory to an undergraduate audience, paying special attention to the connections between algebra, geometry and complex analysis that it brings about. We illustrate this point by giving an overview of the material in the, in the book. Hurwitz theory is the enumerative study of analytic functions between Riemann surfaces, complex compact manifolds of dimension 1. A Hurwitz number counts the number of such functions when the appropriate set of discrete invariants is fixed. This has its origins in the 1800s in the work of Riemann, who first had the insight that multivalued inverses of complex analytic functions can be naturally seen as functions defined on a domain which is locally but not globally identifiable with the complex plane, i.e. a Riemann surface. Studying analytic functions defined on Riemann surfaces leads to the geomet leads to the geometry of the oriented topological surfaces, which Riemann surfaces are. The local behavior of functions reveals a high degree of structure. Analytic functions are ramified coverings, that is, coverings except at a discrete set of points, where a phenomenon called ramification occurs. Ramified coverings naturally give rise to monodromy representations, which are homomorphisms from the fundamental group of the punctured target surface to a symmetric group. The, symmet the ramification at the pre-images of a point B in the base is captured by the cycle type of the permutation associated with a small loop winding around the point B. The count of all such representations can be identified with the coefficient of a specific product of factors in the class algebra of the symmetric group. With a vector space which has a basis indexed by conjugacy classes. Elements of this basis are given by formal sums of, permit of all permutations in the same conjugacy class. A commutative, a commutative multiplication is then defined by extending the group operation of the symmetric group by, bilinear by bilinearity. The class algebra is known to be semi-simple. It admits a basis with respect to which multiplication is idempotent. Computing the product above in the semi-simple basis yields closed formulas for Hurwitz numbers in terms of characters of the symmetric group. To summarize, the count of analytic functions was translated to a geometric count of topological covers and to an algebraic count of group homomorphisms and finally reduced to a representation theoretic computation. In a different direction, Riemann surfaces can be degenerated to nodal surfaces by shrinking loops. These nodal surfaces look like smaller Riemann surfaces glued at points and so the generation creates infinite families of, of recursive relations among Hurwitz numbers. We conclude the book by showing that when Hurwitz numbers are encoded as coefficients of a formal power series, a generating function called the Hurwitz potential, some of these rec recursions translate into partial differential equations that are solved by the Hurwitz potential. Whether this summary makes perfect sense or no sense at all depends on the background of the reader. In any case, we hope that at least two things are apparent. First, that keywords from several different undergraduate courses have been used. And second, that no exceptionally sophisticated term appears. At a school like Colorado State University, most advanced math majors have typically taken semester-long courses in some of the areas mentioned in the above synopsis and typically have not taken all those courses. 
There is some analogy with the situation that mathematical researchers are in when they tackle an open problem. First of all, translation and reformulation of a problem is often a very important tool in mathematical research. Problems that are too difficult um, when studied in a certain way may become approachable when the point of view is changed. When mathematical researchers translate a question in order to find ways to solve it, they are often taken into mathematical areas out of their comfort zone. And they don't have the opportunity to take a semester long course or read a whole book on each topic that they use. But they must be able efficiently to develop a working understanding of the aspects needed for their problem. For their problem. This analogy informed the way we have structured the narration of our story. We have background chapters that introduce complex analysis, manifolds, the fundamental group, representation theory of the semantic group and generating functions in a skeletal way, touching only on contents that we consider essential to our scope. Such background is not collected altogether in the beginning, but is introduced at the moment when it is needed in the story, which we believe develops the exposition in a more organic way. We made the choice of having exercises interspersed in the narration of the book serving as an integral part of the exposition rather than collecting exercises at the end of each section. The exercises are designed to develop familiarity with the concepts introduced, which is necessary before using the concepts in new ways. Exercises also appear in proofs partly to avoid the excessive proliferation of parts of proofs that consists mostly in bookkeeping, but also, but also to encourage the reader to be actively involved and test his or her understanding. This book and can, can and should be used differently by different readers, but we hope that that you are an instructor preparing a course, a student reading this independently, or something in between. You find this book a helpful guide uh, to the first steps in this fascinating topic. Although the main body of the text covers a lot of ground, this is really only the beginning of the story in Hurwitz theory. By nature, Hurwitz theory is interdisciplinary and is part of the basic toolkit in many areas, areas of mathematics. The appendices will offer a glimpse of what is beyond through a small number of essays by guest writers, active researchers in various areas of mathematics who use Hurwitz theory and their work. The scope of appendices is to pique the reader's interest, to leave them a bit dazed and confused, and with the desire to continue learning, which is the constant state of mind of any mathematician. Appendix D. Does physics have anything to say about Hurwitz numbers? What? Vincent Bouchard. What physics? Why would physics have anything to do with Hurwitz numbers? Interesting question, question, isn't it? Well, it turns out that physics, in particular string theory, does indeed have much to say about Hurwitz numbers, and the enumerative geometry and geometry in general. This appendix, appendix, I will try to explain why physics has deep connections with enumerative invariants such as Hurwitz numbers. I will not be precise, nor will I state explicit results or theorems. In fact, there is not a single equation in this appendix. Rather, my goal is simply to convey some of the fascinating ideas behind the connection between string theory and enumerative geometry. Hopefully, by the end of the appendix, you will find these relations interesting enough to delve into the literature where you can find precise conjectures and theorems. Section D.1 Physical Mathematics For many physicists, physicists, mathematics is seen as a tool, a language for building models of nature. However, in the last 40 years or so, a fascinating new research area has flourished using physics as a tool to further our understanding of mathematics. To some pure mathematics, this statement may sound like an abom abomination. But let me try to convince you that physics indeed has much more to say about mathematics itself than one may expect. 
Well, this interconnection between physics and mathematics is certainly not new. Historically, physics and mathematics have always been intimately related. It has been a re very successful in recent years. So successful that it has been given its own name, Physical Mathematics More 2014. In the particular case where the corner of physics studied is string theory, it is also sometimes called string math. The idea is simple but far-reaching. Use the complex structural properties of physical tool, uh, theories to discover new connections between different areas of mathematics. One of the most useful tools that's, that physicists have at their disposal is physical dualities. R roughly speaking, uh, physicists are interested in constructing mathematical models that explain the universe and provide predictions that can be tested in experiments following the scientific method. But sometimes it ha happens that more than one mathematical tool provides the same observable quantities, or at least observables, that are in a one-to-one -one relationship and are perhaps only in some appropriate limits. Uh, when this is the case, from a physics standpoint, both models are valid physical descriptions. We say that those these models are dual. Both, the dualities, both the dualities have an unforeseen consequence. Dual physical models may be constructed using completely different mathematical structures. For instance, a given physical model may be formulated in the language of algebraic geometry, while a dual model may involve objects in number theory or topology. Or topology then the physical duality implies a connection between certain objects, the observables defined in the a priori disconnected areas of mathematics. And more often than not, these connect connections are rather unexpected and would have been difficult to guess by mathematicians without prior knowledge of the physical duality. As it turns out, such connections are often very useful beyond simply relating different areas of mathematics. It may happen that some quantities that are difficult to calculate in one model become easy to compute in the dual model, or that certain quantities in one model and grouped together in a certain way must satisfy startling mathematical properties because of their interpretation in the dual model. Countless examples of studying new mathematical results have been obtained in recent years by, by exploiting physical dualities in mathematics. The drawback, however, from a mathematical viewpoint is that physical dualities are us usually not rigorously proved. Thus, generally speaking, generally speaking physical, physical dualities give rise to conjectures, but rarely do they actually produce theorems right away. Once the conjecture is out, it may take years for mathematicians to actually, actually prove or disprove it. But this is precisely the main use of physical dualities in mathematics as a bottomless pool of often far-reaching ideas and conjectures for mathematicians. After all, mathematicians, our goal is to prove theorems, but first and foremost, we must come up with good ideas for statements that we want to prove. Physical dualities are an endless source of ideas, ideas to, play, to play with. Section D.1 uh, D.2, Hurwitz numbers and string theory. You are probably thinking, sure, this is all good, but what does this have to do with Hurwitz numbers? So keeping physical mathematics in mind, let me now switch gears and try to explain a connection be between Hurwitz numbers and physics. Section D.2.1, string theory. One of the fundamental questions in the theoretical physics is whether there exists a unified mathematical model for phys quantum physics and gravity. On the one hand, quantum field theory provides a successful mathematical model for the three basic fundamental interactions underlying the standard model of particle physics. On the other hand, Einstein's general relativity describes the gravitational interaction with impressive accuracy. One attempt at unifying these two theories is to apply the methods of quantum field theory to general relativity, but it turns out that gravity is non-renormalizable, which basically means that this naive approach fails at high energies. 
something else is at play. Perhaps the most promising attempt at unifying quantum physics and gravity, simultaneously providing a quantum theory of gravity is string theory. The fundamental idea behind string theory is fairly simple. In ordinary particle physics, a model of fundamental particles mathematically as points, that is, zero-dimensional objects moving in space. Moreover, we usually combine the three dimensions of space and the time dimension into a single four-dimensional entity or manifold mathematically known as space-time. This, a point moving in space, traces a real line in space-time, which you call the world line or of a particle. Naively, particle physics may be understood as a theory of real lines in a four-dimensional manifold. String theory postulates that fundamental particles are not points, but rather a one-dimensional extended object objects. If the length of the strings is very small, these will be indistinguishable from point-like particles at the energies reached in current experiments. There are two types of strings, loops, closed strings, and line segments, open strings. Each type moves in space and as such trace and as such traces a real surfaces in, in space-time. String theory may then be understood as a theory of real surfaces in a manifold. With this being said, it would be naive to think that we can, can delve into the details of string theory in a short appendix. Let me instead focus on a few salient properties of string theory. First, first there are different flavors of string theory. It turns out that many of these distinct string models are related by physical dualities, known as string dualities. As such, going back to the discussion above, String theory is a perfect playground for physical mathematics. Second, in the models of string theory, they are most promising for describing our universe. It appears that physical that space-time is ten-dimensional. This is uh, usually modeled as the Cartesian product of a four-dimensional Minkowski space-time and a six-dimensional compact Riemann manifold, the so-called extra dimensions. Roughly speaking. Topological and geometrical properties of this six-dimensional compact manifold dictate the low-energy physics that results from the string model in our observable Minkowski space-time. Mathematically, string theory is very complicated. In fact, much remains to be discovered about the fundamental mathematical structure underlying string theory. Nevertheless, one could try to apply the ideas of physical mathematics to string dualities, to conjecture new connections in mathematics. To this end, it is often more successful to play with toy models of string theory instead of the more realistic string models. These toy models are interested, interesting physically. They compute se certain sectors of the fully-fledged string models, but more importantly for us, they generally lie on, they generally lie on strong and well-established mathematical foundations. Section D.2.2, Topological String Theory. One such simplified version of string theory is called Closed A Model Topological String Theory. In this model, 10 dimensional space time is replaced by a, six, by a compact six real dimensional manifold X, which is assumed to be Kähler. In this case, the string theory becomes a theory of holomorphic curves on X. In fact, this is not quite precise, rather, the theory is really a theory of holomorphic stable maps from Riemann surfaces to the target space, target space X. The observables of the theory only depend on the Kähler structure of X and not on its complex structure. In fact, they have a very precise definition. They correspond mathematically to generating functions for certain rational numbers that somehow count pseudo-homomorphic curves on X hat. More precisely, these rational numbers are obtained by taking integrals of certain cohomology classes over the moduli space of stable maps from compact, from compact Riemann surfaces with a certain number of marked points to X. They are called gromov witten invariants of X and play a fundamental role in enumerative geometry. 
um, a model ter topological string theory can also be generalized to include open strings. There's a theory that becomes a theory of holomorphic stable maps from bordered Riemann surfaces, Riemann surfaces with boundaries to X. The boundaries of the Riemann surfaces must map to a fixed Lagrangian submanifold um, L, which is part of X, called a brain. For particular choices of XL, such as X being a toric, Calabio-Mau, Calabio manifold or Aubrey fold, and L belongs to a particular class of the Lagrangian submanifolds of the topology of the Cartesian product of R2 e times S1, known as toric brains. Open A model topological string theory cannot be defined rig rig rigorously mathematically via pr the procedure called localization. Katz and Leo, 2002. The observables then generate so-called open gromov witten invariance of the pair of XL. There's, there is also another version of topological the string theory, the B model. It is also a theory of maps from Riemann surfaces to a six real dimensional manifold I and Y, but it is, it is much simpler. In fact, the observables of the theory only depend on, depend on the complex structure uh, Y and not in, on its Kähler structure. A particular striking example of uh, strength duality then is the relation between the A model and the B model. This mod duality, known as mirror symmetry, states that the A model on a target space is dual to the B model on a different target space. The duality somehow identifies in a highly non trivial way the Keller structure of X with the complex structure of its ma mirror manifold Y, Ori et al., 2003. A remarkable consequence of mirror symmetry is that generated functions of gromov written invariance of, of X can be rewritten, rewritten in terms of classical and much simpler to evaluate integrals on the integrals on the mirror side. That's a particularly compelling example of physical mathematics at play. Section D.2.3 The connection with Hurwitz numbers. But you are probably still wondering what, did this, what does any of this have to do with Hurwitz numbers? At least we are getting closer. On the one hand, what we do know, what we now know, is that A model's topological string theory is mathematically a theory of maps from Riemann surfaces to a target space X. On the other hand, Hurwitz numbers involve ramified coverings from Riemann surfaces to the complex projective line P1. What problems involve maps from Riemann surfaces to a target space? Could they be related? It turns out that they are indeed related and in many different ways. Here I will only highlight one of the connections between string theory, Gromov uh, written invariants, and Hurwitz numbers. But there are many other very interesting relations. We have seen that open A model topological string theory can be defined rigorously, mathematically for target spaces uh, of the pair XL and its X a toric Calabio manifold of Arbifold and L a toric brain, giving rise to open Gromov written invariants. In fact, to be more precise, it turns out that open Gromov written invariants depend on one more uh, piece of data, an integer f that belongs to z called the framing of the brain L belonging to x. The frame independence, the, the framing dependence arises in the application of the localization procedure to define open gromov written invariants. The simplest example of a toric Calabion threefold is x equals um, complex numbers C3. C3. Generating functions for open gromov written invariants can be calculate, calculated explicitly in this setup. And it turns out that they are intimately related to a sample Hurwitz numbers counting ramified coverings of P1 with arbitrary ramification over infinity um, belonging to P1 and simple ramification elsewhere. 
indeed, perhaps miraculously, it turns out that if you take f uh, to the uh, infinity limit of open gram of Witten, generating functions for C3, we uh, obtain precisely generating functions for simply Hurwitz numbers. Bouchard and, and Marino, 2008, Arasso, Copa, Copa, et al., 2007. The most direct proof of this connection involves a rewriting of both open gromov witten invariants and simple Hurwitz numbers. On the one hand, it, as is explained in Appendix C, simple Hurwitz numbers can be rewritten in terms of Hodge integrals, that is, integrals over the moduli space of curves with marked points. This is called the ELSV formula, Ekedal et al. 2001. On the other hand, open gromov witten invariants of C3 can also be written in terms of integrals over the moduli space of curves with market points, a bit more complicated integrals. This is known as the topological vertex for formalism. Agaganik et al. 2005, Lee et al. 2009, Molik et al. 2011. 2011. With these reformulations established, one can calculate explicitly the f to infinity limit to prove the connection between these enumerative invariants, Bouchard and Marino, 2008. A direct consequence of establishing a connection between Hurwitz numbers and gromov witten invariants is that we can now take advantage of strength of string dualities to study mathematical properties of Hurwitz numbers. M mirror symmetry in particular, particular leads to unexpected new results in Hurwitz um, theory. For example, it has been conjectured, Bouchard et al. 2009, Mora Marino 2008, and proved first recently in Enar and Oranton, 2012 and Fang, Melissa Liu and Zhang, 2013, that for open mo A model on XL with A X atoric Calabia manifold or RB folds and L atoric brain, the mirror B model has a very simple and explicit formulation in terms of topological recursion that originated in the context of matrix models, Chekhov, Inart and, and Ranton, 2006. Einart and Oranton 2007. The recursive description is formulated in terms of complex analysis of, of a complex curve, the spectral curve that somehow encapsulates the geometric data characterizing X and L. In other words, all open gromov witten invariants of XL can be re reconstructed from simple and complex analysis on the spectral curve quite remarkable, but then by evaluating appropriately the f to, uh, in the f to infinity limit on the mirror B model site, it, it follows that generating functions of simple Hertz numbers must also satisfy a topological recursion for a spectral specific spectral curve. The spectral curve can be calculated explicitly explicitly via the f to infin infinity limit and it turns out that the spectral curve corresponding to simple Hurwitz numbers is the Lambert curve x equals y times the exponential minus y so-called because of the similarity to the Lambert w function related to the enumeration of trees and combined torics that satisfies z equals w of z uh, times the exponential of w of z. What we just found is that all simple Hurwitz numbers can be restricted, reconstructed in a very explicit way via topological recursion from the Lambert curve, Bouchard and Marino, 2008. To be fair, Physical mathematics only provides a conjecture that all simple Hurwitz numbers can be restricted recursively from the Lambert curve. But by now, several proofs have been formulated independently from the string theory 
interpretation. Perhaps the most direct approach involves the ELSV formula and the topological vertex formalism. In this context, what, we can, what can be shown is that the cut and join equation is satisfied by simple Hurwitz numbers. Golden and Jackson 1997 and can be recast into the topological recursion for the Lambert curve in Nahr, Mulas and Safnuk 2011. But the connection is highly non-trivial. Alternative proofs, proofs have been obtained by rewriting generating functions of simple Hurwitz numbers as matrix integrals, Roth et al. 2011, or by exploiting the polynomial property of simple Hurwitz numbers, Lunay, Barkowski et al. 2015a. It should be noted that this relation between Hurwitz numbers and string theory can be ge generalized beyond simple Hurwitz numbers, for instance, to double Hurwitz numbers counting ramified coverings of P1 with arbitrary ramification over a zero in infinity belonging to P1 and simple ramification elsewhere. On the one hand, a formula, a formula analogous to the ELSV formula exists for double Hurwitz numbers, but the Hodge integrals must be replaced by Hurwitz Hodge integrals of the model space of stable maps from twisted Riemann surfaces with marked points to the class, classification classifying spaces B, Z, A, Johnson, Panthari, Pande, and Tseng, 2011. On the other hand, one can consider the open A model on the toric orbifolds X equals C3 modulo Z, A. Open gromov witten invariants can then also be rewritten in terms of Hurwitz, Hodge, Integrals, Brini and Cavalieri, 2011, Ross, 2011, Ross and Zong, 2013. It can be shown that the two theories, again, are again related via the F uh, to infinity limit. Um, Bouchard et al., 2014. Mirror symmetry applies applied to the orbifolds X, equals the equivalence clause of C3 modulo ZA, then applies that a certain clause of double Hurwitz numbers called so-called so -called orbifold Hurwitz numbers can also be obtained via the topological recursion but with spectral curve now given by X to the A, uh, X to the A equals Y times the exponential of minus I times Y. A proof of this statement can all be obtained using along similar lines also as for simple Hurwitz numbers using the reformulations in terms of Hurwitz Hodge integrals and, and the cut and join equation for double Hurwitz numbers. Bouchard et al. 2014, Do, Leich and Norbori 2012. Alternatively, altern alternatively, Connection can also be proven using quasi polynomiality, Cavalieri, Johnson, and Markwich 2010, of double Hurwitz numbers, Donan, Barkowski et al., 2015. It is possible to generalize this connection to include all double Hurwitz numbers, however, however it is unclear, unclear how to proceed for more general Hurwitz numbers. This is certainly an interesting avenue to investigate further. It should be finally mentioned that the connection between Hurwitz numbers and string theory gives rise to many fascinating results. One of them is the existence of a quantum curve for Hurwitz numbers, Bouchard et al., 2014. Mulas, Chadrin and Spitz, 2013. Unfortunately, limited space prevents me from elaborating further on these interesting developments. But if you find the notion of quantum curves intriguing, you are certainly encouraged to delve deeper into the accompanying literature. Section D.2.4, Physical Mathematics and Enumerative Geometry. Physical mathematics is a relatively new area of research, but it has already led to far-reaching far new results in various areas of mathematics. 
St string theory in particular is an exciting playground for physical mathematics due to the ubiquitous presence of string dualities. Mirror symmetry is an example of such duality with striking implications for enumerative invariants. In this short appendix, I could only touch very superficially upon the subject, but I hope that I have managed to convey the excitement surrounding physical mathematics and its application to enumerative geometry and Hurwitz theory in particular. There are undoubtedly many more fascinating results to come.